Good afternoon and welcome to everybody uh, joining our webinar on the hidden advantage, maximizing your fringe dollars. Uh, my name is Paul Skirpsky with PVBS. We are the sponsor of today's event and uh, we're fortunate enough to have you know, one of our uh, greatest partners, Axum Fringe Solutions Group, that is going to go through the presentation uh, regarding um, how to really maximize and leverage your fringe um, as a strategic advantage and not just as a cost. <clears throat> so um, quick agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about PVBF, um, just to give you a little background on what we do with Microsoft Dynamics. And we're going to switch it over to Bradley uh, over at Axum right after that. And he's going to get into the presentation on the hidden advantage and maximizing your fringe dollars. So PVBS, we are uh, the top Microsoft Dynamics partner um, for the government contractor solutions throughout the U.S. So we focus on Microsoft Dynamics NAV for small mid-market companies and Dynamics AX for enterprise businesses. Uh, we've been working with Microsoft over the last 15 years, and we've really had some tremendous success uh, to really provide a solution that hasn't been available in the marketplace that provides all the compliance capabilities while driving down the cost um, which also goes into your indirects, you know, so that G&A cost, um, and that's the, the things that we do to really help government contractors to provide better solutions to run their operations. So today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Dynamics Nav, and Dynamics Nav, like I mentioned, for small mid-market companies, you know, provides all the project accounting capabilities, financial management, web-based time and expense all the compliance baked into it. So whether you know, you're a defense contractor and you've got to have DCA compliance, CAF, FAR compliance. Uh, the other thing is, is that from a licensing perspective, really providing a license model uh, that's a little bit different than the competitors out there. Instead of it being based on headcount, it's based on concurrent users outside of the accounting system. Uh, so this gives you a little view of the, the type of modules that are out there, everything from that financial management capabilities through project accounting. And for companies that sell products, we've also got warehousing and manufacturing capabilities, as well as the whole quote to order process. Today's presentation is really focused on companies that have SCA contracts. And what we've seen specifically in the last three years is a huge uptick for us in terms of the number of businesses migrating to Microsoft Dynamics that have FCA work. And some of the key points of where we're helping them is that ability to manage those area wage determination rates directly in the system, managing the unique elements from both the costing and billing perspective for your FCA work, a fully integrated payroll and HR modules with timekeeping options ranging from a web-based interface to recording your time on a mobile client and also integration with time clock software. Um, and we've signed up you know, some of the largest FCA contractors um, along the East Coast, specifically in the last two years. We brought on a company that had about uh, 5,000 employees at FCA work and another publicly traded company um, last year that had had the FCA work. So really uh, it's become a differentiator for us uh, as we compete in the marketplace. And this is a, just a little screenshot showing you, you know, from your resources, that ability to define what a resource's default wage determination location is, as well as defining, you know, those AWD rates inside of the application. All right, so now we get to the fun part, and I want to introduce Bradley over at Axum. And I've been fortunate enough to sit through uh, Brad's presentation before. I can tell you I learned a ton um, in that 45 minute period, but Axum Fringe Solutions Group, they really help businesses to maximize that return on human and capital investments. And I think the thing that Brad really was able to drive home to me is that they are really a strategic partner. And most companies that have SCA work, they just think of this fringe cost. You know, how do I manage my fringe related to the SCA work? you know, as a necessary evil. And what Brad is going to talk about is some ways to flip that equation 
and turn it into a strategic advantage. So I'm going to flip it over to Brad, and uh, Brad, we're going to have you go ahead and uh, help educate the folks uh, on the webinar like you did for me in the past. So Brad, uh, go ahead and take it away, and you can show your screen when you're ready. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I like to you know, thank Paul and, and the entire team over there at PDVS for, for hosting this webinar today. Uh, they absolutely have a great product. I actually used to uh, compete against them at my former company, uh, who, we, who will remain nameless, and uh, they were they were a tough tough group to get up, up against, especially in the world of government contracting. We actually couldn't compete with them. So it's kind of like, uh, like I'm a Yankee now playing for the Red Sox or something. It's a super fun feeling, but thank you. And uh, you, know, you did a great job of introducing exactly what it is I'm gonna talk about today. People tend to think of their fringe burdens, you know, the same way they think of the, the electric bill or taking out the garbage. It's just something you have to do as a, if you want to, you know, make sure that your government contracts are, are a part of, are, are compliant and profitable for yourselves. And that's the problem, is that for far too long, that's, that's how we've thought of it as an industry, is to say, oh, fringes, I got to pay those, I got to do the reporting on it. It's such a burden. When the truth is there's lots of advantages out there that people can utilize in the fringe benefit market if they just take a different approach to it. All right, so the, we think the question we continually get, and we just want to diffuse it before we even get started, in the fringe benefit market, and since we're also in health benefits as well, is with the new administration, with all of the changes that are going on, you know, how can we be prepared? What's going to happen? You know, how are things going to be different in six to eight months? And our first reaction is to say, remember, it's government contracting and government government policy, six to eight months is a very short period of time in reality. Nothing's going to happen quickly. That's just not how things work. But secondly, there's no way to be prepared for that one. You're, you're just as good about guessing about the weather or whether the stock market's going to go up and down. We don't know where things are going to go. What we advise is to become the best company you can be. You know, it's sort of like uh, improve upon, improving upon your fundamentals rather than worrying about things you cannot possibly change or predict. Get down to what it is you do and get better at at doing it is what we actually recommend. And it's been tough times for government contractors for a while now. At GovCon Survey, we actually, uh, with a company we continually do, they did great work with, uh, with information government contracting, showing one to 5% profits for a lot of government contractors out there. A lot of people bidding low, bidding low to get the job and then not finding ways to get it done. Meanwhile, health insurance benefits have gone up 46% in the last three to four years. So that means that benefits are getting more expensive, and that contractors are having trouble making ends meet on, the, on their bids. But that's where fringe benefits can truly come in and take an advantage. Instead of seeing fringes as, as a, a thing that drags you down or a necessary evil, as, a, as it was so well put earlier before, see it as a way to, to go and manage your fringes and change the way you do business as a way to make you efficient. Remember that the base idea in the first place of fringe benefits is that you be able to provide quality benefits to government people who work in government buildings and on government contracts ultimately so they don't get mad at the government but that's just a side product the point is that we you know you want to give benefits to the actual employees and like i said for far too long because it's so complicated and difficult people have found ways to get around it so here are the advantages you can gain from uh from fringe reporting the first one i'm going to talk about is uh, you can actually have a company subcontracted to pay for your compliance reporting, and that payment can come out of the fringe benefits. It's viewed as an employee and a benefit to the employee that they get every one of their fringe dollars tracked and have the information for them. You know, if you work in the HR section or if you talk to those teams, people are always asking questions like, well, did my fringe go for this? What about my rate here? What about my pay for that? All of that stuff can be done transparently, but here's the kicker, paid for out of fringes. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, it, you know, using your fringe benefits means eliminating paying out cash fringes whenever possible. There's a lot of additional expense and risk that come with doing that. Contractors for a long time, for at least the five to the last five to six years are having trouble fulfilling work on contracts which is a very frustrating feeling to be have the bid to be there at the job to be in prime to make a position and not have workers to do the work fringes can actually help your approach to that world as well and give you peace of mind against these constant changes All right so fringe re, fringe benefits when managed correctly can add these advantages which ultimately amount to lower cost and lower uh, or higher profitability more odds of winning a bid just by being by changing how you look and choose your fringes. So let's dive into the compliance thing I was just talking about a second ago. When 
and I used to set up contractors for the, the former company that used to compete against uh, BBBS. It, when I would ask people if they had government contracts and they said no, the number one reason was I didn't want to do that compliance reporting. It was it was as predictable as the sun coming up when I'd ask that question. A lot of work, a lot of go back and forth, lots of rule changes, and they're 100% right. Compliance is a difficult thing. How difficult is pretty much evidenced by the Department of Labor. Three out of four government contractors audited, and these are statistics directly from the DOL, were found to be non-compliant when they're audited. So that means that 75% over, actually 78, thought they had it under control, but didn't. All right, when, they, when they, the Department of Labor came and looked, they ended up being fined. And that cost was is, is a lot higher than just having to pay the back wages and having to pay the fines and the cost of tracking down those people. But in addition, you can get knocked out of government contracting or worse, have your pay suspended on all of your contracts until you fix this past non-compliant violation. And that can hurt because you'd have to still continue your work, not get paid and pay to fix a compliance mistake in the past. So the cost of that compliance and getting audited by the DOL can add up very, very quickly. And it's something that a lot of companies just aren't great at because, like we said, the rules change all the time, and it wasn't that simple from the start. So as is for, did you know that contractors can use fringe dollars? This is in the, in the FAR, in the SCA agreement, in the Davis-Bacon agreement as well, written in there, I've read it myself, that you can use compliance dollars, to, or I'm sorry, fringe dollars to manage your compliance reporting. Like I said, it's viewed as a benefit to the employee that they get all of their fringes. So you can lump it in there with the same cost as health and vision and dental and compliance reporting. It counts as a benefit and it's a low, relatively low cost benefit as well, right? But the upside to that is that now you don't have to pay someone in your office or an outside third party to do your compliance reporting any longer. It's not somebody's job anymore. You added it to your fringe cost. It would almost be like the equivalent of your, your phone company calling you and saying, oh, by the way, the electric bill is now part of your cell phone bill, but the bill's not going up. Well, the only thing you could say to that would be, well, yeah, that's great. I would love to add those two costs in together. All right, so what you can actually gain by subcontracting your fringes to, to your actual contract is compliance management. You will actually eliminate your liability with the right partner, and you'll avoid all of the costs and burden and hassle that comes with having to do that compliance reporting. I talk to contractors all the time. Some say it takes two, three weeks to get the compliance report for the, comp the, for the previous month because of all the, the adjustments that come with insurance and the pay changes and the payroll changes and the hours were wrong and he or she was on a different job. All, a lot of that stuff can be taken off of the plate of your team and your team can be focused on doing things that are more essential to, to, to your profitability. And speaking of which, it can actually change the way contractors bid their contract. So if everybody has to pay fringe benefits, which they do, and everybody has to do compliance reporting, which they do, if you're not paying for it out of your pocket, adding it to the GNA and over expenses, and instead adding it into that current fringe rate, you have an advantage on anyone you're bidding against because they have to factor in one to 3% of their total contract cost to, to cover the actual cost of the compliance reporting. You can move that, remove that from your bid just when you're doing your general equation for bidding is now you don't have to factor in that cost. Yours is gonna be lower, which allows you the flexibility to win bids without having to sacrifice that project, that profit margin. Basically not having to lowball yourself into winning a bid. Instead, you know, finding a way to use your fringes to get around that. On average, Axum right now returns 2.3% to every contract we subcontract on to our contractors. We're not the only group out there who provides this type of service, but we are the only ones who don't make you buy a, a product along with it. We just flat out do the compliance and charge out of the fringe benefits. So that's one thing that we can do. Go in and take all of that burden off your office staff along with the cost and time of having to do your compliance reporting. The next advantage that, that fringe benefits can truly help right is about cash fringes. Cash fringes are the easy way to answer compliance. If I just give it to them in cash, I don't have to deal with benefits, I don't have to deal with adjustments, I know I gave them what they needed to get, they love it because who doesn't love more money, all right? And it's a, it's a win for everybody. When And everybody right there is kind of an exaggeration. 
all right? Cash fringes are an expensive process. Like most things that are quote unquote easy, you're going to pay for that easy, all right? To the tune of about 20% of your wages or 20% of your fringe spend will be added on for FICA, for FUDA, for SUDA, for all important workers comp, especially if your contracts are in a more dangerous field or a more risky field would actually be put, then that workers comp is based on the amount of money you pay that person as well as several other things. So the cost alone can really kill a contractor's profitability. When I see that one to 5% I showed you earlier, contractors are struggling with, my first thought is cash fringes, all right? It's easy, but it costs a lot of money. And that's the thing. Cash fringes were, were originally created to, to provide employees benefits. So you give them their health and life insurance, you give them the things that they want. What often happens, unfortunately, is that the benefits that are recognized as bona fide somewhat fall short. All right, so a lot of people, you know, say, ah, oh, I can't even get all of the benefits I need to meet the 427, so forget it, I'll just do it all in fringes. But the benefits you see on the screen, one through five, are all things that in the right situation, that's the key part, but in the right situation, can be paid for by fringe benefits. All five of those coverages are things you could offer in addition to health and dental and vision and 401k and still be under the 427. But people are, are reticent to get rid of the contracting or to, 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 rid of, to make the contracting change over to cash fringes because, you know, they're afraid their guys or, and their people won't accept it. It's the most common objection we hear to, well, we can't go to a full benefits program. Our people will leave. In our experience, it's usually only one or two people because, one, people don't like looking for new jobs. And, two, when you see the, that you almost have like a union-style benefits package for your employees, now, they quickly, very quickly stop to object to it and recognize that they are now secure in, in, in their future as opposed to you know, having a couple extra bucks but rolling the dice on what could happen to them. Keep in mind that 70%, that's an accurate figure, 70% uh, of all bankruptcies in America are medical bills. They are medical bills from doctors and offices and why people lose their money. And this is something you're providing your employees. And it's not lost on them, not nearly as much as people think. For years, though, people have gotten away with cash fringes. It's like I said, it's a super, super easy answer. But, you know, and that's because, like I said, you, you get everything you want. It just costs you a little extra. But as we said at the start, with things changing, with profitability being difficult, with benefits not only costing more, but uncertain what's going to happen with healthcare in America, taking every advantage you can to save money is probably the smartest and only preparation you can actually perform. And this is a great way, if you're providing cash fringes, start to think about providing a more diverse benefits package with, with, your, actual, with your actual fringes. It can, it can lead to a lot of goodwill between you and your employees. Which leads to my, the third and, and maybe perhaps the most potent advantage that fringe benefits can bring to contractors. Compliance reporting is a direct hit. It removes cost right away. It's savings. It's really attractive because, you know, it's just taking money out of your pocket and putting it over into fringes. But if you were to ask me the number one and most aggressive cost in government contracting, I would tell you it's turnover. That since the early, 2000, early 2010s, uh, basically since the recession of 2008, 2009 hit and came, a lot of contractors have since not seen workers return to their actual contracts. And the struggle is real. You know, according to the same uh, AGC of America, the American General, General Contractors Association, nine out of 10 contractors say they're having problems. And more than half of them say that they've had to raise their actual base rate of pay, sometimes above what they'd have to pay them on the contract, just to get workers in the door. Okay, And that is not a sustainable process for any contractor to have to raise wages just to get people filled into contracts. Right? First of all, as we demonstrated with the cash fringes, it applies the same thing here. More wages also equals more tax burden. That every time you up that wage, you had to add another 20% on FICA food or SUDA and your workers' comp and your 401k and anything else that's linked to how much you pay your employees. Right? Then there's the turnover and training costs. Every employer will tell you that the process of finding, screening, and getting an employee on board is only part one to training them, getting them to do things the right way, and getting to a point where the employee is actually productive on the contract. So all the time you're doing all the things I mentioned from screening to training, 
productivity goes out the window every single day. And that's where contractors' stomachs turn and the thought that keeps them up at night is if they could just keep people on the job, they would be able to turn a much better profit. Of course, if you increase wages, you're just going to get that domino effect that, hey, well, this other company is offering 25 cents more an hour than you. What can you do to bid it? Or, hey, I heard Tim got a raise. Why don't I get a raise? And I heard Sheila got a raise. It can create jealousy, ugliness, and cost very, very quickly. And again, if you are, at, if you are, you know, barely operating on your contracts, or you're constantly feeling the the pain of turnover, there's no way you can adjust to policy changes or have the flexibility to do things. You're going to be at the mercy of whatever government acronym comes out next for the government contracting, whether it's ACA or ACHGA or whatever they come up with. You're going to be at their mercy because you're still just trying to find ways to get workers. And believe it or not, benefits are more important than people than ever. There's one thing that, quote unquote, Obamacare did for America, in my opinion, right or wrong, is that people focused and thought a little bit more about their health benefits than they ever really had before. And so now it matters to employees to what kind of benefits they have, because they've seen what happens to people who, who don't. As I mentioned, 70% of people go bankrupt. In that idea. So half of their employees, according to a, a MetLife poll, um, and this is actually backed up by a Harvard study as well, say that, you know, their benefits are why they stay at their company. And think about it. You've heard that sentence in your personal life. You've heard a friend say, after complaining about what was going wrong in his job, why don't you leave? Uh, I got some great benefits in there. Or why unions have so little turnover. Because if there's one thing you know about a union worker, they're most likely going to have great benefits. And that's the, that's the idea that you want to try to put in using your fringe benefits as a substitute. But basically, finding a reason for employees to come to your company and to stay at your company is hard because it's hard to differentiate yourself. And it's not something that necessarily you can do with just wages alone. Having a dynamic benefits package can be the way that you create an advantage for recruitment and retention. You have a package that makes people want to stay, makes people want to come in the first place to say, listen, I get everything with them and I get a decent wage. Those are the type of employees that stick around. The ones who value those kinds of things are not the ones who are just looking for a quick buck. They're the people you want to keep around. As I mentioned before, other benefits besides health and vision and dental and 401k are capable of being provided buy fringe benefits. There's some ifs to that one, and the government has to recognize them as bona fide benefits, but that's basically what Axum did with our contractor's choice plan. We're the only plan in the country right now who offers these coverages as fringe benefits. And specifically, the two that I want to talk about here are one, TRICARE supplementation. If you hire veterans, this is a huge advantage for them because it eliminates the rest of the cost that comes with their subsidized health care from being a veteran. It's like a bonus plan or, you know, that cuts down their prescription costs, eliminates things like deductibles, et cetera. It can be a huge advantage. Because often with, if you hire veterans, they already have retirement and health care. It can make them difficult to accept your plans and it ends up being cash fringe. So this can be a huge thing for veterans to not only make them happy, but to cut down on the cash you have to give them. The other one is short-term disability. You know, unless you, you provide a, a contracting service that is, you know, specifically office based, short term disability is important for the contract worker. You know, a broken hand that lasts for six weeks isn't long enough to be covered by workers comp, isn't going to have probably the workers probably not going to have six weeks of vacation sitting around and you may or may not want to lose him or her at that job. So you end up having to do something out of pocket or finding a way to help that person cope as opposed to just providing the insurance that would have them cover in the first place. And again, providing it from the fringe benefit that you had to spend anyway. And that's what we started talking about and where we come back to, is that fringes are ultimately a way the, to take what you are doing with you, how you spend your money and get more for your dollar. Instead of viewing it as a way to burden yourself, you can use fringes as a way to, to stabilize your business, as a way to create retention, recruitment, and a, a low cost or no cost liability saving compliance section that makes your business stable so that you don't have to worry about government changes. And that's the thing. Change is the only constant in government contract and government contracting. Things are going to change. They're going to continue to change over and over again. 
That's why giving yourself the flexibility to handle it is the best thing you can do because you can't predict those changes. You don't know what's going to happen next with the Department of Labor and how they're going to go about compliance reporting and the aggressive stance they've had for the last few years. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. So build your company to be flexible. Build your company to have the, the right to say, yep, we have a compliance partner that handles that for us so we don't have to worry about that rule change or, ooh, that's going to make for tighter margins, but we're already saving money because our turnover has been down, all right? Those are the ways that you can make sure that these policy changes wash off you like, like water off of a duck, essentially. So that's what I want to take just a moment to review as we get close to the end here, and then I'd like to really open things up for questions with you guys. I know I kind of got talking fast and, and got excited about, uh, you know, what we were actually doing today, but I want to take a second just to, to stop and, and say, Fringe benefits are one of the things that contractors massively overlook as a way to change their business. And we want to absolutely come in and use this as a chance for you to take your business to the next level, to take over compliance, to offer benefits packages, to make things easier for the contractor. And we have a number of strategies to do that very thing. So you take your fringe and you take it to move your compliance and take away the liability and the rule changes and all the stuff that comes with compliance. Then you take you you expand your benefits package for your contract workers to include you know high profile premium benefits along with the basics to make them stay at your company and make other people want to come. Remember, a worker referral, someone who brings a friend in, a good employee who brings a friend in, is 10 times better than finding someone off of an ad site who just randomly applied. So if you have the type of clout that benefits bring, that a strong benefits package brings to, a, to an employer, then you, you can have your employees recommending you to people they know who, who are looking for work. And, and all of those things and lead to increased profitability, and that, that is ultimately a bidding advantage. That if you can afford to lowball your your bid compared to uh, compared to you know your any of your compliance clients I'm sorry any of your competition and still be able to hang on to your profitability margin then you're sitting in a place of government contracting that few people are at the moment so at this time and uh, we are, our microphones aren't open but down in the bottom or on the window that came open with your screen there's a chat area. Um, and that bottom right window. I would love to have any questions that you would like to talk about uh, shot into that chat area. Feel free to throw anything in there about uh, anything we discussed today uh, in general. The, the fringe compliance section, the contractor's choice, about cash fringes, about you know even ACA or healthcare benefits. Feel free to throw anything out there in the question section. Um, we'll give you a minute to do that. Uh, as well. And then uh, after that, we're going to turn things over back to, uh, to Paul on the other side. And uh, in the meantime, while I'm waiting to see if anybody has any questions about what you can do with your fringe benefits. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I see somebody's typing right now, so that's good. Give me just a sec. Uh, while you're doing that, like I said, feel free to contact Axum, um, uh, email or just axum at fsg.com. Okay. Um, actually, I got a question here. Uh, it was on a slide earlier, but I didn't talk about it. It actually asked about cash fringes and the ACA. Um, we actually had a slide earlier that talked about that, um, that there's actually a risk to ACA. So super fun fact. Uh, when you do your uh, compliance for uh, the Affordable Care Act, you have to pay a certain minimum. So if you offer cash fringes to your employees instead of benefits, it's totally legal. The, the employee signs a form and says, hey, I opted out, I took cash, I'm going to use that cash for benefits. That moves the responsibility over to the employee. But what actually happens is your employees who took your, your coverage now have a higher cost than the person who, who just took the cash because they view that they took the benefits and turned down the money as a double cost. So if you have an employee who took your benefits, say $3, and turned down the $4 you were going to give an hour to, the $3 an hour for benefits, the $4 an hour you were going to give there, the total cost of their benefits was actually $7. So cash fringes can actually turn the, the employees, non-contract employees especially, who took their, their health care cost instead of the cash fringe into an ACA violation. And that's what I actually meant by the risk of cash fringes that can actually turn into an ACA violation. Um, let's see, we have one other 
question here uh, that just came in. Uh, it's asking about uh, going back to how fringes can actually be part of the compliance. Um, is that legal? Uh, like I said, yes, it's actually in the uh, in the FAR agreement that as long as uh, the fringes are or the fringe benefit payments are run through a trust, uh, that they can actually be part of the uh, the fringe benefit for compliance. Um, essentially, all fringe benefits really come down to is the government wants a way to know that they were truly paid for, that there's no way to scam things in there. That's why healthcare and vision and dental and 401k, all those industries have, have fringes that or have, you know, a lot of restriction on them, have a lot of different, uh, how do I put this, um, a lot of different rules to their actual organization. And so what actually ends up happening is they get to automatically certified as bona fide because of all of those rules. Well, things like life insurance, things like critical care, all of those secondary insurances are often not nearly as restricted as health insurance is or 401k is. And so they end up not being paid for by the government. They say, well, we can't prove that this life insurance you purchased isn't just some scam that you use to pay for fringes, so we can't, we can't certify it. And that's what we actually did with the contractor's choice was found a way that the government can say, okay, these benefits, because we can see that they were paid for and there's no room for monkey business, can actually be certified now as fringe benefits. So uh, it's absolutely a, a great thing for contractors. But ultimately, it comes down, like you said, I know it's a really long answer to the question, but ultimately, it comes down to if you can prove it's actually paid for as a benefit, and by the government's definition, it can be a benefit. And that's why all kinds of things are out there, but most people only assume it's vision, dental, 401k, and your health care. Those are the only things that are allowed. And truth is, those are the only ones that are super, super easy to be counted as benefits. The rest of them take a little doing. Okay. Um, I actually see one more person is actually typing in a question. So I'll just give them a second uh, to, to talk it over. Okay. Um, they Okay. So they asked if we can actually be uh, a part of the, the contract itself. Okay, so um, can a, a, we mentioned subcontracting before as one, one of the things we do. So essentially, uh, the fringe benefit contractor is somebody, is, a, is a, re, a new idea in government contracting to say at least. But you don't have to put us on the contract, even though we're a subcontractor, uh, as part of, of your actual spend. The same way you don't have to actually you know, put down that you're gonna, your healthcare benefits are gonna be through Aetna and your 401k is gonna be through John Hancock. Remember, we're ultimately a part of a fringe spend. We're not literally going to the job and, and performing any work on your behalf. So essentially, we're a subcontractor uh, that you don't use any work share with. In fact, um, we're an SDVOSB, we're uh, uh, I'm sorry, Service Disabled Veteran Owned Small Business. So we actually count as part of a set aside credit, but at the same time, we're you know still part of the fringe spend. We can actually be a double dip for contractors without removing zero percent of the work share. Um, and that actually comes with again the zero percent liability of having to do your uh, your work care as well. Um, okay, we had one more pop up uh, real quick. Um, actually, asked about audits. Uh, do we provide audit support? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, Axum provides audit support, 100% uh, audit support. Uh, you know, we'll actually be sitting next to you if you were ever audited. Um, we've been on 34 last time I heard, 34 different DOL audits of our contractors. So far, we have had zero infractions for anyone, um, which is good because we pay for those infractions if they're wrong. So uh, that's definitely good. But uh, the longest audit to date is four hours. Um, one thing people need to remember about audits, or the, uh, one of the few things you need to remember is that you can be audited for anything in your last two years of compliance, anything within the last two years on a two-day notice from the DOL. So they can send you an email today, technically speaking, and say, hey, we're, not go we're gonna be coming out and auditing all of your compliance for the last X number of years and show up and if you can't produce those reporting, that reporting and you can't prove what you paid, it is gonna become painful very quickly. Now, do they do it that way? No, they, they, they're a bit more sporting than that. They'll give you a couple of weeks and some better notification. 
Um, one other thing I just want to share since you brought up audits, and this is one of my favorite facts about this, is that the number one reason people are audited by the Department of Labor, the absolute top reason, 67, 68% uh, of audits come from employee complaints. Okay, someone calling the DOL about wages or fringes or both is just about two thirds of all Department of Labor audits. Until recently, it was closer to 85%. But the Department of Labor, seeing that how many contractors are compliant, have gotten more aggressive over the last five years. So one of the easiest ways not to get audited is to never allow your, never give your reason, give a reason for your employees to complain. Axum actually offers a 24-7 employee, employee portal where all their fringes, wages, vacation hours will be tracked and shown for as long as they've worked there. Uh, you know, like I said, we're 100% responsible for audits and liable for any infractions. So one of the things we do as a company that you can feel free to steal is, you know, we make sure our employees have their questions answered and that, you know, basically they're happy so that they never call the Department of Labor and we have to go through some costly audit because even if we're found to be compliant, you're still going to end up spending money on that audit. There's going to be time, there's going to be preparation, labor, all of the things that come in with that are going to be a part of the audit as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually got a question. Um, I'm sure, Mark, this, uh, Paul, it's actually a, a great uh, chance to pass this back over to you. Um, you'll be yeah. sending out uh, the recording for this and the, the slides as well, sir? Absolutely. So what we'll do, and, and thank you for the, the great presentation. Um, we're going to have a follow-up email that goes out to anybody that uh, we did record the webinar. Um, so if people are interested in the recording or the, the PowerPoint presentation, we can cer certainly share that. Um, but again, we appreciate uh, everybody for attending today. And Brad, special thanks to you on a great presentation. And uh, hopefully this... Uh, help to educate some of the folks on some strategies around leveraging fringe benefits, you know, as a way to, uh, you know, win more business and not as a, a deterrent from profit. So, so at that, we're going to close it up and uh, thanks for everybody for joining us today and have a wonderful afternoon.